So, you know, big moment yesterday um, in, in the Commons and a bit of a test for Sir Keir Starmer's leadership, but many people abstained, including yourself. Why was that? Well, our primary reason wasn't to challenge the leader of the party. Our primary reason was that we don't think it's a good deal and all the problems with it are going to become apparent in the coming weeks and months. I pointed out that it's actually going to leave Britain less secure in terms of our work in Europol and access to EU databases and so on. It's not a good deal. And also, it's a democratic atrocity to try and ram through such an important bill in just one day. Yeah, there was a, there was a lot of um, criticism about the, the time scale um, and the, the, the lack of scrutiny. Did you consider voting against it? Why did you choose to abstain rather than vote against? I think we all um, considered actually voting against. But in the end, we didn't want to send a message that somehow we were against completing the Brexit process. Not least because I suspect a great many members of the public and even some of us as MPs are tired of talking about Brexit. But we just couldn't bring ourselves for, to vote for Boris's deal. And I think that those Labour MPs that did vote for Boris's deal will live to regret it. In what way? Because... There are, as I say, so many unresolved issues in relation to the deal, particularly, for instance, what's going to happen to services, what's going to happen to the City of London and financial services. But every time some of these people, some of these Labour people that voted for it um, say anything, Boris will say, well, you voted for it, didn't you? Although I suppose the same logic could be applied to when the Conservatives backed the Iraq war, but they weren't held responsible for that. That was very much Tony Blair and the Labour government. I know you didn't support the, the Iraq war. Well, I mean, I certainly um, had no compunction reminding Tories that they voted for the Iraq war. I mean, you know, we're all responsible for our vote. And as I say, I think voting for Boris's deal, voting for his faulty Brexit deal, will be one of those votes that a lot of Labour MPs will regret that they ever cast. Mm. And in terms of it, it, what was striking, actually, um, last night, looking at the, the figures and um, how all the different parties voted and the MPs, a couple, many people made the, the comment that, that Europe is this issue that has plagued the Conservative Party, you know, right back since the 1970s, since, since Thatcher. But they seem to have... I suppose, come to some sort of resolution and come to some sort of peace over it. Although there was a huge purging of uh, Conservative MPs who, who didn't agree with the line. Yet Labour now seems to be the party which is very riven over um, Europe. Do you think Europe is going to continue to cause the Labour Party huge, big divisions? No, we're not riven over Europe. And as for the, the idea the Tories are at peace um, over Europe. Have you met Bill Cash? Um, some of these people will never be at peace over Europe. There's a momentary pause in the internal Tory warfare, but, it, but it's only momentary. And as far as the Labour Party is concerned, we are united in wanting to be an outward-looking internationalist party. And I think we're all saddened by some of the things we will be giving up by coming out of the EU, like the Erasmus programme for students. Um, Diane, I had John Curtis on my show, Professor John Curtis, a couple of days ago, and he um, has done this poll of polls and, and Labour is, is level pegging with the um, Conservatives. But he made this point that the Conservatives have become the party of working class voters and Labour has become the party of more metropolitan middle class um, voters. It, how does Labour change that? Because the heartlands for Labour were those working class voters, but they do seem to have gone to the Conservatives. Come on, Aisha, when you're saying working class, what you're actually saying is white working class. If you meet the people that are Labour in Hackney, you will find that very many of them are working people, not necessarily white working people, they're of migrant background, but I think we have to be very careful of oversimplifying the pattern 
of Labour support by making the assumption that the only genuine working class voters are white working class voters. It's not the case in Hackney. It's not the case in big cities like Manchester or Birmingham. The Labour Party continues to get the support of lots of working people, particularly in our big cities. And what about in the shires and those towns and, and the, the red wall seats? How does Labour win them back? Well, I mean, there were real issues um, behind what happened to some of those post-industrial seats. Part of it was that they were post-industrial, and we need to have an industrial strategy. We need to be offering something to those seats to replace steel, the potteries, the mining, and so on, which were once the lifeblood of those communities. We also need to look at the candidates that we put forward for those seats um, because I think in the past, under New Labour, there was a tendency to parachute people into what were considered extremely safe seats who had actually no real relationship um, with the area. Um, but, yeah, it, it's about the policies we offer those areas. It's about making sure that local people with roots in the area come forward as candidates. But I think many of those seats will have had enough of the Tories by the time 2024 comes round. And how do you think Keir Starmer is doing? What's your assessment of him so far? And what's your advice to him as we go into 2021? I wouldn't dream of giving Keir Starmer <laughs> advice. He is, he is in, indeed the leader of my party. I mean, I think, I think the fact that root level pegging is good. The only thing I would say is that he won the leadership by making promises, by making pledges, which more or less indicated that he was going to stick with the Jeremy Corbyn domestic agenda. And I think if he chose to move away from the policies which we campaigned on in 2017 and 2019, if he chose to move away from them in some decisive manner, he would find that a lot of party members would be quite perturbed. And what about um, uh, the decision to um, get rid of Jeremy Corbyn from, from the party? Do you think he should be readmitted? Yes, I think Jeremy should be readmitted. Jeremy joined the party when he was 16. Whatever you think of his um, policies, no one can say he's not given the party his life. Yes, he should be readmitted. Even though he was quite toxic for a lot of voters at the last general election. Yeah, a lot of people are toxic. Tony Blair was quite toxic in Hackney um, when he was leader. Jeremy should have the whip restored. I'm quite clear on that. OK, and final question, Diane, as we head in... I mean, I will say one thing. Tony Blair did win three, three elections, but, I mean, very divisive uh, figure. I, I do see that. In terms of... Um, the the EU, do you see us rejoining Europe in your lifetime? I think the debate has moved on. I think we might want to renegotiate our relationship with the customs union, which is going to be very difficult mm. for a lot of British manufacturing and maybe the single market, but basically the debate has moved on. And just let me say that um, when it comes to Leave Remain, I think I have quite good um, Leave credentials. I voted against the Maastricht Treaty in 1992. I voted, I voted against every piece of European unification that's come before Parliament. But my scepticism about the EU was all about democracy. One of the reasons that made me very certain that I wanted to vote for Remain was the nature of the Vote Leave campaign, which was all about EU migrants mm. and little England. Uh, and no. But in terms of wanting to talk about and being aware of the democratic deficit in Europe, I have as good a record as anybody. And do you think, final, final, final point, so is your, is your sort of vision that we have to move past this now and that the Labour Party has to focus on, on domestic issues rather than still stuck in that sort of existential crisis that we've all been in for the last five years? I think the Labour Party's always um, been very concerned about domestic issues and we have to go forward with that. Um, so leave, remain, debate 
is over. We have to move on. But the bad news, Aisha, is I think some people, some members of the public are very anxious for us to vote for Boris Steele because they think that means they won't hear anything more about Brexit. The bad news is I think we will. There are too many elements of Boris's deal which are sketchy and will need to be negotiated in the future.